Okay, um, I think that's time, so let's get started. Hello everyone, uh, my name's Grant Murphy. I'm a security architect at IBM. Um, my contributions to OpenStack has mainly been through the OpenStack Security Project, um, and I'm also a member of the vulnerability management team. So today we're gonna to talk about OS Query. Um, we're gonna talk about um, specifically trying to understand how it actually works um, and why it's useful for understanding the security status of a deployed host and then look at some ways that you can extend it and make it applicable uh, within an OpenStack environment. So um, for those that were around in the last session, you probably know that there's a lot of uh, uh, monitoring events that occur in a, in a large scale deployment. Um, so monitoring an environment and, and knowing that you've been breached is, is a difficult problem to solve. Um, and I think uh, these kind of figures are, um, you know, they really set the, um, need, you need to have a, a good story basically as, as a software uh, solution. Uh, which is where I think OS Query comes in. So this was a project uh, released by Facebook in 2014. Um, it's released under a BST license um, and effectively exposes the operating system um, as a high performance relational database. Um, it's got over 130 tables at the moment um, and it's support for Linux, Mac OS and Windows. Um, so it's actually being used in production right now by uh, these companies and they're also contributors to the upstream project. Um, and I think that's really a, a testament to the, uh, the maturity of the project and uh, the strength of the concept. So to kick things off, I thought I'd jump into a demonstration of what it looks like using OS Query in interactive mode. Um, if I can figure out how to actually Okay, um, so here we just have a, a Linux host and I'm gonna fire it up in, in interactive mode. First thing you'll note is that it says that you're using a virtual database. So the way that it, the actual query interface actually works is it uses a SQLite virtual tables um, which call back into a high performance native code. So um, the interactive console is very, uh, for anyone that's used SQLite before is uh, very, will feel very familiar. Um, so you can do things like look at the tables, uh, look at the schema of a table, and then you can execute queries. So for example, um, if I was to select timestamp from time, what I get back is the, the current time of, in the operating system. And that's all executed at the time that the query is run. So, to demonstrate why this is useful from a security point of view, um, you can probably already imagine that um, the ability to pull together a bunch of different tables of information and, and um, gather them together to make some uh, insights about the system state is actually quite useful. Um, but I've gone ahead and um, written an example malware. <laughs> it's, it's not really very advanced, but it basically is a, it's a remote um, shell uh, that tries to re retains its presence at, um, on the system um, at all times. So it tries to uh, exist between reboots. Um, so this, the types of things and the behaviors that you'll see by this malware are that it connects to a, a, a strange host. Um, can we read that down the back? Just thumbs up? No? Okay. Um, uh, th when it executes, it immediately deletes its present from the file system um, and then starts itself as a, a, as a daemon process and just basically loops around. Nothing really clever here. Um, the way it tries to persist between reboots is to um, add an entry to the cron table. Um, and basically it just tries to make sure that it's there all the time. So. To save me actually typing a bunch of commands here and while you watch, um, I've written a little script that um, will show some of the queries that you might execute if you wanted to detect that uh, particular malware. So um, this is just wrapping, oops, wrong one. 
it would be the finding malware demo. Um, wrapping OS query I um, and executing a query. So here I've decided to look for any remote host that, um, oh, sorry, any ad remote address that is uniquely connected to by a process. Um, given that this is a DevStack instance that was running on my local machine, um, the address uh, uh, there looks a little bit um, unsavory, so I might want to pull in together um, information from a couple of other tables and, and look at specific um, things about that process that's connecting there. So here I've done a join on the process open sockets table and the processes table, um, looking for that specific address, and you can see that it is in fact a shell that's connected to that remote host. Um, some other things that we might look for is indications of um, the persistent stuff that I was talking about earlier. So you can see there um, the, the, the bash command to try and reinstall the malware on that machine. And um, other queries that you can come up with, um, for example, the fact that it removed itself from being, uh, having a physical presence on the file system. Uh, you could just run a query like this um, and set on disk is equals to false. And there we have an example of the, um, the supervisor process that is ensuring that you know, it has an active connection to that remote host. But I, I think you will probably have the idea from there. So, uh, okay, cool. But in itself, that's not really that interesting, right? I mean, you could have ran a, a bunch of uh, shell commands and figured that out for yourself. Um, what is interesting uh, from, uh, is in a production environment, is you want to notice any changes or differences in your environment as they happen. So the way you can do that is by configuring um, OS query D, um, and you set a number of queries, for example, um, for that particular malware, you might be monitoring the, the cron table and looking for any changes to that um, might indicate a trigger alert and a logging event. Um, so what it enables you to do is actually look for, basically do state-based intrusion detection. Um, and it allows you to reason about the behaviors of malware, for example, in an environment rather than, or a malicious hacker in an environment rather than looking for specific uh, file hashes or, you know, whatever. Um, in addition to that, its battery is included. It has a lot of great features. So you can do file integrity monitoring, um, process auditing, socket auditing. It has support for existing um, uh, indications of uh, compromise in, in, in the Yara format, which is a, a format by virus total. Um, and one of the uh, best thing I think about it is it's so easy to configure, um, install, extend. Um, and um, a major hadn't actually called out at, at the Austin sub, uh, some of the features that uh, any security automation for OpenStack might have. And I feel that um, OS query does, goes a long way uh, to meeting those requirements. Okay, so the first thing I'll walk through is the query schedule. So say, for whatever reason, you've decided you want to monitor um, any changes on a particular host for the, the sudo group. Um, you want to add this query to the query schedule. So this is an example of what the OS query configuration file looks like. Um, so all you have to do is create a new uh, named query. In this type, name of this one is sudo group. Um, slot in your, your query in, in JSON uh, format and specify interval for that to run. The first time that that is actually executed, what will happen is um, OS query D will actually look in the underlying persistence layer, which is RocksDB. Um, and the persistence layer is really used to maintain the query state between each execution of the, the scheduler. Um, so the first time that's run, it'll look for um, 
execute this query and anything that was in the result sets will be appended to that um, persistence layer. It will also generate logging events for each of those. So here's a, a truncated version of the, a logging event that's been sort of reformatted so you can actually read it um, and you can see that it's been added. Uh, I should also note that um, in addition to like the fields here, you can add custom decorators um, that you know annotate each log entry with whatever sort of additional um, host information that you'd like to. Um, so, if in between um, a logging schedule window, I make a change to the system and add a user to that group, uh, the user sum guy. Um, the only event that's actually transmitted and uh, and correlated out in, into my logging event uh, management system is uh, this one here. This, so there's only, what we're getting in and what we're detecting is stateful changes within the system. But you might be sitting there thinking, and I'm, I'm guessing because this is a room full of security professionals that um, what would happen if, you know, in between the first time the query is run and the next time um, I was to add a user to that group and then remove them. Um, would the change be detected? So to solve that kind of problem, OS Query has a particular um, ev event framework in which you can define, and it basically operates in a publisher subscriber sort of module. So um, a good example of that is uh, file integrity monitoring. monitoring. Um, in that, you have a publisher which publishes events and basically that runs outside of the normal query schedule. So you would have something using, uh, in the case of file integrity monitoring, it's using iNotify to watch specific changes on, on the file system, and then that publishes events to the su subscriber table. And the subscriber table basically acts as buffer um, for those events, and every time when you want to append that information into uh, your logs and, and make sure that that is um, alerted on, um, that will actually get you add a query to the subscriber table, um, as you'll see in a moment. Um, so this is an example of how you would configure it. Um, so for the file integrity monitoring, um, what you need to do is add um, um, select all from file events. Basically, we'll retrieve all of the file events that um, have been published and, and picked up um, by this file events subscriber table. And that'll make sure that those get logged out. And then you can configure the publisher um, to look at specific paths. Um, so to see that in action, Sorry. Um, what we'll do is tail, whoops. If I could type, there we good. Tail the results uh, log here, uh, move all of that buffered stuff out. And um, to see that in action, we're just going to make some changes to those files within that um, SSH directory. Um, so we're going to create a couple of files, change some attributes, and then remove them. And this is going to execute well within 30 seconds. So uh, we should see those events turn up in the log file eventually, if I'm lucky. <laughs> Hopefully, oh, there we go. I was going to say, hopefully, we don't have to wait the whole 30 seconds for, for that to happen. Um, so you can see, like, you know, each of the changes to those files was picked up, um, the fact that they were created, and you got additional, you know, things there. Um, but basically, that's an example of the eventing uh, framework in action. Um, okay, so in in the interest, like, say, if you wanted to target a specific set of queries for a specific set of hosts, having everything in a single configuration file is less than ideal. 
Um, so the way that you can distribute in a modular fashion um, a certain set of queries that you want to inspect on the host is to use query packs. Um, now, the OS query community has a number of these already, um, specifically around incident response, IT compliance, and vulnerability management. Um, clearly, all of these are sort of operating system uh, based focused um, uh, and, and, you know, examining for abnormal behavior on the operating system. So if you want to enable any of, the, any of these or all of these, um, basically all you have to do is um, go ahead and, and just add this section to, to your configuration and, and point to a specific um, query pack file. And if you wanted to write your own, um, all you have to really do is translate a query such as this. So you've been reading the security gu guide and decided that one of the security checks at the end of the identity section um, was something that you wanted to monitor on. Uh, you, you might use a query like this and just want to see you know, what the file permissions are um, of the configuration files for Keystone on a regular basis. If you're going to turn that into a query pack, uh, the way that you would do that is um, simply, well, there's, there's a couple things to note here. Uh, apart from the, just adding the query as you would for a normal thing you want to add to the schedule, um, the discovery stage. So the discovery stage is um, making sure that a query pack is actually executed when uh, it makes sense to execute it. For example, like you don't want to run a bunch of queries about Keystone if Keystone is not installed on the system. Um, you can also um, make queries platform specific and um, dependent on specific versions of iOS query. Additionally, you don't always have to uh, always have to do differential changes. Um, so here I've set snapshot to tr true, and um, by doing that, effectively, every time that query is run, the entire result sets will generate logging events. I said earlier that one of the best features about OS query is how extensible it is. So it's possible to write custom extensions for how it's configured, how events are logged, and even custom tables. Um, most of the examples that you'll see online are actually in C++, but thankfully for the OpenStack community, there's a project called OS Query Python uh, that makes this really, really easy. The way that extensions work is effectively they run as a separate process and interact with the OS Query D and OS Query I uh, extension manager via a Thrift interface over Unix domain sockets. So, as an example, um, this is probably the most brain dead example that you can give of how to write a custom table. So, you can see how easy this is. I've basically had to inherit from um, a table plugin, defined a name a method that returns the name of the table that's going to show up, and also the columns that are in that table, and then the generate. Um, method is actually what all, does all the work when a query happens. In this case, I'm returning sta static values, which doesn't really make a lot of sense, but there's other things that we can do that are more interesting there. So I've sort of been playing around with this a bit, and I, I feel like this is an interesting way to look at um, the security state of, you know, on a host that is running an OpenStack service. Uh, so I started playing around with some of the tables that um, might be interesting to look at. Um, there's, still, there's a lot of opportunity to do more than that. And obviously, there's a lot of operating specific sort of queries that you'll be interested in running in production. So let's take a look at some of the things that I've put together. OK. Okay, so first, um, one of the things I thought about, oh, well, first thing I should do is start, I'm going to start OS query in interactive mode. Um, so if, if you were using this in production and you had a lot of custom extensions, they can be automatically loaded for any time 
the process starts. Um, but uh, just for the purposes of the demo, I'm going to start these manually. So, well, um, the first demo I have is uh, just using the SD OpenStack SDK um, to communicate and present that information in our in OS query table. Uh, so here's the example table that I created for, for Keystone. Um, and it's, it's pretty much the brain dead sort of stuff that you can get from running the OpenStack uh, command line of, uh, prompt. And, and I mean, clearly this is not really that useful from um, an intrusion detection type purposes, but it is just an example of the kind of things that you can do. Um, so after I've started that table, um, we should be able to see here a bunch of keystone uh, tables have been added to the potential ones that we can query. And you can query, oh, query them as you would expect. There you go. Um, you know, and I, I guess that sort of ex is, yeah, the kind of thing that can can do. Um, the next example I had was um, OpenStack configurations. So, one of the artifacts that come out of the OpenStack security project is uh, security nodes, and often they're based on um, particular configuration scenarios that might, um, you know be impactful uh, or have a security impact um, on a deployment. So to be able to monitor to for, or look within your um, environment for specific settings is kind of useful. Um, so if we start that one up, uh, we can do the same sort of thing. So, oh, that did not work. Ah, thank you. There we go. And uh, you can see I've, I've used a, you know, secure password to connect to my RabbitMQ. Um, pretty nice for a security pr presentation. But there you go. Like, say, I mean, you might be able to write specific rules um, uh, to detect uh, OSSN in your environment. Um, and the last one is because I'm interested in vulnerability management, um, is basically looks for Python, the versions of Python modules that are loaded uh, within the, by default within the Python environment and tries to fingerprint them. It also looks at, um, so you, you can also query um, OpenStack versions from the installed, um, uh, that are installed on the system. So uh, OpenStack versions and, you know, as this is a DevStack instance, you know, you've got all the different versions that are installed. So the idea here is that you could probably take um, OpenStack security advisories a step further and um, generate rules that would be detected uh, by the affected version range. Um, but that's really, um, as far as I got with custom tables, I think there's a lot more you can do there. Um, so uh, that would be the next steps. Hopefully by now you've sort of got an idea about some of the sort of things that you can do with OS Query. Um, there's a lot I haven't talked about, like the way it can be extended, um, the, the different um, logging mechanisms, the way it can be centrally configured. Um, but um, basically what I wanted to do in the next step sort of move is like look at how we can 
uh, convert some of the value that the OpenStack security project create and unlock it from uh, you know, the documentations and the, and the mailing list sort of work and, and use that to actually um, make it easy, cons easily consumable by operators and um, you know, turn up on their uh, uh, log management sort of uh, dashboard when something unusual happens. Um, so, so some of the ways that I think you can do that, as I already mentioned, like the effective versions for OSSAs, um, and maybe even looking at sort of certain behavioural indicators of compromise. Uh, Major Hagen actually talked in the last uh, session about the crown jewels, so you could actually add a lot of tables around um, what's connected to, um, you know, your RabbitMQ instance, what's talking to it, what, you know, what hosts are talking to it. Uh, that kind of thing will be easy to add as an additional table. Um, but, I mean, yeah, that, that's kind of all I was going with uh, for that. Uh, I think it's a, it's a great platform. Um, I don't know if I've sold it uh, very well, but um, I think it provides a solid automation platform um, that you could use in a, in a deployed OpenStack um, uh, in an OpenStack deployment um, to monitor this, the security post posture of that system. And um, I think it also meets the requirement of performance and it's very easy to conf configure and, and tune the performance so it doesn't actually have any impact uh, to the uh, control plane or, or, or any operational um, workloads. Okay, I'm gonna stop there. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them now. I put the code up on um, OpenStack Barcelona uh, on my GitHub, and uh, yeah, um, thanks, otherwise. Okay.